Hey guys, Skater here. For this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys some solo Bed Wars 1v1 tips and tricks. This can help you in solo tournaments a lot, and also a lot of them apply to just regular solo Bed Wars. So yeah, enjoy the video. So to start off the tutorial, let's talk about bridging. Bridging is absolutely essential in solo Bed Wars 1v1s, as it can decide the entire game with a right or a wrong rush. So there's basically three different types of bridging methods that are good for solo 1v1s, there's Scorpion Bridge, which is um, my bridge that I used in Purple's Solo Bedwars tournament. Um, it's basically also known as the one-third stack, which is, um, you know, it's, it's basically one-third stack. So, yeah, that's basically it. You guys are pretty familiar with that. And then basically you just place ladders in the middle right here. If you want to look at the bridge formulaically, it's one block out and three blocks up. One out, one, two, three, one out. One, two, three, and then you place ladders in the middle block again. So, um, one tip that I'd have for when you're getting up to like, you know, let's say you're getting up to like the very, very top of it, I would suggest putting ladders all on here so that way you have more space to not take knockback because ladders will reduce the KB a lot and we'll go more into ladders later in this video. But, um, putting more ladders at the top will be better than if you just had like one ladder, it's less space to work with. You know, if you have a ladder here, then you can go up further. If you didn't have a ladder here, you'll just be, like, sitting up top, and you can take a lot of KB, and you'll fall. Um, so, yeah, that's the Scorpion Bridge. The other type of bridging method that you can do is one stack. Now, one stack, from, you know, third-person perspective, kind of, like, kind of looks like this. It's, like, where you alternate shifting and not shifting. Um, you can also bleep hole as well. Um, that's good, but it takes a long time, a long time to learn. Uh, sometimes it's not always that consistent, uh, and sometimes you'll end up wasting a few more blocks. Like, see here, I placed three blocks here instead of just two. So, um, while it can be faster, it's uh, a little bit more costly. It's not that much faster, even if it is faster by a little bit. It's not too much faster. So, that's one stacking, basically. Um, if you don't know how to... Um, <laughs> If you don't know how to do it without shifting and you only know how to do it like this, I would highly suggest um, doing Scorpion then because it's this is just going to take way too long and you're going to get like high grounded really badly. Um, this is just not going to work. You need to know how to one stack very, very fast, just as fast as I was doing it, or you're going to get rushed really fast. Now the other bridging method is two stack. Now I would advise this when you have like, like let's say you've one stack for a while, let's make like a little little bridge like this right and you have a lot of high ground like let's say they're all the way like they're making a flat bridge like this like all the way over here right and if you one stack anymore you're gonna get it you're gonna take a lot of fall damage so another one that's good is two stack um so it's one speed bridge and then one up so like like it's like if you were normally speed bridging like this like this but it's like one speed bridge and then up one and then up it, it's it's weird it's really easy to memorize though and you can get really fast at it a lot of ranked players do it um yeah it's a it's a it's a good bridge if you don't need that much elevation but i would suggest uh, mainly the two bridges you're gonna see is um scorpion and one stack you might occasionally see two stack but it's not gonna pop up that often now i'm gonna go over the items that are commonly used in solo bed wars 1v1s the three that are used that I see a lot are TNT, uh, ladders, water, and fireballs. Now, uh, water is very underused. You can use it for, like, three different methods. Um, one is uh, actually watering a bridge. So let's say you have a one-stack bridge just like this, right? If you place water at the top, it'll flood it, like, completely flood it, and it will take forever to get up here. Uh, it just slows down your opponent a lot, and the only way, if your opponent is smart, they'll have to make, like, another bridge where they get up, but that takes time, you know, and blocks, so they might not have any, as many blocks, and it will stay around for a while, even if, if even though I've blocked it off here, it's gonna stick around for a while, so watering a, a bridge can be really, really good in some cases. Another good use for water buckets is water bucket clutching, uh, so that way you don't take any fall damage. Well, you can use ladders to do this as well um it's sometimes it's a little harder to use ladders because you have to find a block to clutch against with water though you can clutch on literally anything 
So, like, as long as you have a block to clutch on, you can clutch on slabs, you can clutch on stairs, you can clutch on blocks that are not even full, um, which is pretty good. Um, if you're struggling with uh, clutching with ladders, then water bucket clutching might be a good option for you. One of the disadvantages with rushing with water is it does take up four gold, um, which makes it so that way you can't use TNT when you rush. Uh, that's one of the disadvantages, but if you don't really use TNT that often, then water buckets might be a better option for you if you're struggling with ladders. Another good use for water buckets is preventing TNT from exploding. If you place a water bucket right where the TNT is, like where it's exploding, you can do it before the TNT is placed or after it is placed, and you can like place it where the TNT is. My suggestion is to do it after the TNT has like already fallen, like let's say... This is your bed right here, right? And the TNT is right here. Um, I mean, I can't place the water here because it's not like primed TNT, but you can like place it right there uh, and it'll just prevent the TNT from exploding completely. Uh, and that's a really good use for water buckets. Another item uh, that's really good in solo Bedwars 1v1s is fireballs. Fireballs are really only good on Pernicious and Zarzul because they have a fast iron generator. You're not really going to be able to use fireballs on maps with like slower generators, like, like a map like Hollow or Glacier or something like that. You might be able to use them on Lighthouse as well because it has a relatively fast generator, but um, they're, they're really only best for um, a map like Pernicious or Zarzul. If you do use them, they can be really nice because you can obviously fireball somebody off or you can fireball somebody's bed. Um, TNT, they have, you know, your opponent has time to react, so it's not a 100% bed break, but if you use a fireball correctly, uh, there's really no way your opponent, uh, can know if their bed is about to be broken, and most people, if they hear TNT, they can walk out of their gen and, you know, try to attack the person who's trying to get their bed with, but with fireballs, it's instant uh, explosion and the bed is usually exposed unless they have endstone but endstone really isn't a problem in solo bed wars 1v1s because the gen is so slow um so yeah if you end up being on pernicious definitely consider getting a fireball they're pretty overpowered next up is tnt the most overpowered item in solo bed wars 1v1s uh, you can use tnt to tnt jump i do that all the time when i'm doing solo bed wars 1v1s if you've watched my video from when I won Purpled Solo Bedwars Tournament, I constantly TNT jumped in almost every game. Uh, TNT jumping is super, super overpowered, and combined with ladders, it is unstoppable. Uh, TNTing a bed also, if you do it correctly, is a free bed as well. Um, those two uses make TNT super, super fun to use, and it's super, super overpowered as well. Uh, you can also use it in almost every rush, whereas fireballs you can't because it costs 40 iron. In most maps, you rush with 16 iron and 4 gold, so it doesn't give you enough iron to be able to buy a fireball. But TNT is really nice because you can buy it with almost every rush if you want to. Um, and it's it's just... It, there's really not much else to say other than it's a really good item to use. Um, don't save your gold first rush, because first rush often decides the game more than any other rush. So you want to give it your all the first rush. Um, definitely take that four gold with you. Whether you're going to buy a water bucket or TNT, definitely use it. Next up is the item that everybody's obsessed with now. Ladders. Uh, ladders are super, super, super overpowered. Uh, mainly because you can ladder clutch with them, and that's really fun to do. Um, I use ladders in every single game I won in Purpled Solo Bud Wars Tournament, and I think that is the reason why I won. Uh, in these in new Solo Bud Wars Tournaments, people are starting to use ladders a lot more because they are super overpowered. Um, they're mainly just used for clutching. Uh, I would suggest when you're clutching with a ladder, uh, hold shift. Uh, it will help you clutch a lot more. I didn't actually make that clutch, but, um, if you hold shift, it will, um, make sure, like, if you're falling from, like, a really, like, high, dis like, a really far distance, and you have, like, one block to clutch on, it'll prevent you from, like, falling off, because sometimes if you're, like, falling a long distance, even if you clutch on the ladder, you'll just fall through, like that, um, so make sure you hold shift, and that way um, you can actually clutch on the ladder. That's my only, um, that's really my only 
tip for clutching with ladders. Um, the other one is remember that ladders uh, actually have like a block space like on top of them. Like right now I'm not on the ladder. I'm on like top of the block of the ladder. Like here I'm actually on the ladder now. You know you can see that I'm going up and down. Um, but just make sure you're not you're not landing on this because if you land on this you'll still you'll still take fall damage. And of course make sure you don't place it like over here or you're not going to clutch on it. Uh, you know make sure it's like in this general area like right here. I think a really good uh, way to help you with ladder clutching is like stay on this ladder right here and practice doing this. That way you can like memorize the spacing. And if, you're, and if you're feeling confident, you can try to um, do this, like a lot more blocks, and you can see how it actually works. Uh, if you do that, you'll eventually get the spacing right. It's just about spacing and practice, trust me. Once you start ladder clutching, it's really, really fun to do, and I highly suggest you do it. Okay, so now that I've gone over like all the items, I'll just share some miscellaneous tips I have. So my first miscellaneous tip I want to share with you guys is patience. Now I know you guys are wondering, like, wait. Why are you telling us to be patient? It's a very fast-paced game mode. The reason for that is, let's say you are on, like, 8 HP, right? You've taken a decent amount of fall damage, and you've killed your opponent, right? You want to stay on top of your opponent's base and be patient until you're fully regenerated. Now, that can take a long time, and if you guys watched Purple's stream, you'd see that I stayed on top of Noah's base in the finals one game on Hollow forever absolutely forever and i was just waiting for him to make a move where i could get his bed um that's the only reason i won that game it was not pvp based it was just patience based a hundred percent just being patient and waiting until he would he went a little bit too far into his generator another tip i have to share is being on red team is better than being on blue team now it's not because of color preference it's actually because it's literally an advantage to be on red team in some maps if you look on uh like waterfall for instance that's one of the tourney maps you'll see that there's more area to clutch on blue than there is on red if you if i'm talking like ladder clutching um some maps are symmetrical such as glacier uh but in general it's better to just go for red because in like you don't know what map you're going to be warped into right so if you just go on red worst case scenario is you guys are equal but if you go on red and it's a map where red team has the advantage then you have the advantage starting off i know that's not like an actual game mechanic like tip but it is a tip that actually does work uh and can win you the game sometimes which is kind of overpowered and kind of stupid but it exists guess i thought i would share it with you guys Another tip is don't be afraid to ditch the bed. You can clutch. Um, clutching is really, really easy compared to uh, clutching in 4s or any other game mode. Clutching in solo is really easy. All you have to do is just outplay one player. You can buy a set of pots. You can buy an ender pearl. Just make sure you go mid because um, it's very hard to clutch without emeralds. If you have emeralds, it's a very, very different story. And if you use your emeralds correctly, you will not lose... Uh, just make sure if you lose your bed or you're about to lose your bed, you're like, oh gosh, there's no way I'm going to be able to keep my bed here. If they're about to drop TNT or something, just dip out. Like, it's not the end of the world if your bed is gone. It is unfortunate and it's a disadvantage, but you can still win the game pretty easily if you play your cards right. Uh, emeralds are better than diamonds. If you have the option of going to diamonds instead of emeralds or vice versa, go for emeralds. Um, if, for instance, if you're on waterfall uh, and how the dem the diamond gen is kind of out of the way, go for emeralds. You can buy ender pearls, pots. Those are so much better than diamonds. Although, if your opponent does have like sharp and prot two, and you have no upgrades, it's a pretty good idea to go for sharp. Um, if you're fighting somebody with prot two and sharp, even if you have speed, invis, and jump boost, it's gonna be difficult to kill them. So just make sure you don't get too far behind in the diamonds, but in most cases, emeralds will be a better bet to go for. The next step I have to share with you guys is if your opponent has like serious high ground on you, uh, you might want to consider low bridging. Low bridging is really good if you have like no chance of winning if you go up top because your opponent will have like a lot more high ground than you try low bridging it can work really well sometimes 
Anyway, that's all the tips I have for today. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video so very much. My channel growth recently has been absolutely off the wall insane. Um, I was planning for this to be my 1k special, but then it turned into my 2k special, and then my 3k special, and now it's going to be my 4k special. Um, so, it's kind of insane. Um, yeah, I, there's really no words for this. Um, anyway, thank you guys for watching. I know I'm very bad at outros. I'm going to try to work on that. Anyway, peace guys. See ya.